Hello everyone, welcome to the day 5 of Frontend Mentor Challenges and today we are going to create a junior challenge here so this is the challenge we are going to do today so this is what it looks like so you got a range slider here and if you toggle you can increase or decrease the page value packages from here and it will also increase or reduce reduce the value for the package per month so if you select the switch here to switch between the monthly billing to yearly billing you will get a 25 percent discount so this is the value and it is actually reduced okay so this is the challenge we are going to do today so without any further ado let's get started At first we need to download the component here. So let's download the starter file and open up the zip folder here. Now let's extract this folder in the desktop here. Now we can open up the design, the image. So this is the active stills. When you hover on that it looks like this color. So the normal stage is this one and this is for mobile display. So let's go with this the desktop version first then we can modify it to looks like the mobile version for a smaller size display. Now I am going to open the entire folder up by the Visual Studio code. okay so in the index.html we need to do some cleanups here we don't need this attribution and everything so this is the text we need to put so at the top we need to put this title and this subtitle also it got an image as a background also this section has a background color kind of stuff then we can create a box which will contain the entire thing so you can put this two into a flex box then a slider then this one in a div maybe then we can create an acer so we cannot put everything else everything here inside div because in that case if we apply padding with that this border will not take the entire height so we can put these things into a div and these things into a div to apply the padding so let's do that I will create the markup first so for the title I will create a div with the class of title inside it let's use an ASON and put the text here after that let's use a paragraph tag to put this subtitle so after the title i will add a container div to make it center then a wrapper which will have the background color of this box and also will have some border radius and inside the wrapper we can add another div let's keep this the class name of maybe top content so this top content div will contain uh, this part here so inside the top content let's create a div with the class of packages then we need to actually i need to zoom in okay so in the packages there will be two things this uh, page view and this uh, cost per month so in here we need to put this uh, 100k into an, a different span or something like that because we need to modify this value by using the javascript and in this case it will only be this 16 so for that let's uh, create a df for the first one which will be the page view so pv maybe 
inside it let's use an paragraph tag and use an span with the id of page view so it will be the changeable text so 100k then we need to put the 100k and page views so let's grab this and paste it here so this is the page view now let's add the cost so i'll just keep this a class name of cst now let's use an paragraph tag and dollar sign after the dollar sign there will be the main cost so we need to put it inside an span so we can change it by using the javascript then the other text span id let's give this id of cost okay we need to get some space to let the image arc span id cost and it will be i think okay 16 it actually doesn't matter it will just act as a placeholder because we are going to modify this by the javascript so per month what we can do is we can add this 0 0.00 here because this text are kind of bold dark and this one is the normal text so let's add the per month in the next line time maybe okay i will just paste it here now after finishing of this entire package div let's create another div here so it will be the range slider so inside the div let's put an input and the input type will be range so let's give this id of maybe price slider we can also give this a class okay, let's do that class range we may need that now minimum value will be 0 and max will be 4 so if we uh, read the readme.md here it got 5 page packages total so 10k page view 50k page view 100k 500k and 1 million so we need the rails slider to take 5 best of page here and in this case it will start counting from 0 to 4 that means 5 right now let's add a default value here in the middle of this so 2 now if we open this up by the live server extension here we can see that it got 5 best of us this is the first one second third fourth and fifth so we can select five of the packages by this range slider so after this range slider let's create a div with the class of billing so this uh, div will contain the this text here so i will add each of the text inside a paragraph tag so the first one will be the monthly billing let's just Put it here after the monthly billing we need to add and switch but as you can see this kind of looks like a switch but we cannot we don't have anything like that in HTML so what we are going to do is we are going to use a checkbox here so whenever we check on that when the checkbox will be checked then it will be at the right side so I have a video on that how to create a checkbox by using CSS so if you are interested in that you can go and see that also we are going to do this again in here so we are going to actually modify the default checkbox and make it looks like a Swiss kind of stuff so let's create a div with the class of maybe um, actually let's create a label here and give this a class of Swiss so 
we don't need the for value so in the switch we at first need to add an input type of checkbox we don't need to add any name but let's name this billing and the id will also be billing fine we can actually get the value from this input field by using the id with javascript so after that let's use an span with the class of maybe um toggle slider we are actually going to create the switch with this span with the class of toggle slider and we are going to hide the default on so after putting the toggle button we need to add this stuffs here so again a paragraph tag which will contain the yearly billing and then let's use again a paragraph tag and we need to style this differently so let's give this a class name of something like discount let's grab the text and paste it here now we got three items and each of the items will have a tick image here they actually provided us the image and in here we got a simple button so what we can do is we can apply flexbox here so after the top content i will just add an hr tag and after that let's create a div with the class of footer inside it let's use an another list and list item so the list item will contain an image at first images and icon check dot svg now this is the first text let's create some copy and now we can replace the text okay fine the another list is done now we are going to add the anchor tag which is the button here so it will be blank and the text will be this one so the markup is totally done and this is what it looks like so now we are going to move on to the style.css and style it so at first let's create a style.css file here it will contain all our styling so we need to link it up with the index.html so link css and this will be it now let's open the styleguide.md and here there are lots of colors and the font we need to use is the man rope the font weight 600 and 800 let's open this up and import the font weight of 600 and 800 let's import and we need to remove the default padding and margin of the browser so margin will be zero and padding will be zero now let's target the body here and at the body i'll just add the font family of this on okay fine after that let's give the body a background color so they have provided us with a color here so this is the main background i will just copy this and paste it here so the font size for the body is 15 pixels and after that let's add a color for the entire text of the body because as you can see here in the design this text color these colors are all the same so if we add that in the body we don't need to add this color with all of our text separately so that color will be i think the 60% on 
which is the grayish blue for the text so let's just grab that and paste it here okay now we are done with the body let's target the container and for the container i will just add a maximum height of 500 pixels and we need to make this center so max height will be zero and auto now the elements will be at the center it doesn't working because we need to make it margin zero auto not the max height zero auto now this is totally center after this let's target the wrapper here and for the wrapper let's add a background color of white because this is the wrapper and it got a background color of white let's also add a margin up on rem so it will have some gap at the left and right whenever in the smaller size display smaller than 500 pixels after adding the margin let's add the border radius to make the corners rounded like 15 pieces it will make the corners rounded here okay after that i will just target the title so the title is this one and we need to make this center so let's add text align center let's also add some padding and as you can see here in the design it got this background color so we can add some padding with this title to look like this so there is a small padding at the top but there is a larger padding at the bottom so for the top i will add a padding of 70 pixels from left to right 30 pixels maybe and from bottom let's apply 300 pixels we also need to add a background color to make it visible and the background color for the body will be this one actually uh, okay it's actually this one so i'll just grab this and paste it here okay it looks fine but in the design it has some border radius at the corner so we need to apply this here so border bottom and left radius and i will give this a value of 200 pieces now it looks like the design now let's target the taste here so title and h2 actually it's the a on let's give this the color they have provided us with this is the test and cta background color so this is the color and after that let's give this a margin bottom actually there is two cursors here okay the margin bottom 10 pixels to create some gap with the subtitle here now we need to add a background image with that as well because this is the background image so let's add the background image with the title background image and url images and this will be the pattern circles the background repeat will be no repeat and we need to position this at the center not here so let's add a background position and the background position will be center 
now it is at the center in the horizontal plane but we need to push it at the top so what we can do is we can add another value here like 40 pixels now it will be in here and it looks similar with the design now let's uh, work with this box here so it is the wrapper and we actually need to push it at the top inside this title so what i'm going to do is i will add a margin at the top of minus value so something like 200 pixels now it looks like this and which is similar to the design okay fine now after the title we need to add some padding with this top section and the bottom section so let's target the top content and also the footer and give this a padding of 50 pixel now it got nice gap all over it now i'll just uh, make it smaller to see it live okay now let's work with the packages and at first we need to give them the display of flex to align them properly and the justify content will be a space between so they will appear after each other the opposite corner now align items will be center Let's also add a margin bottom to create some space with this range slider. Margin bottom will be 30 pixels. Now let's target the text from the packages. Packages and PV, which is the page value, and paragraph tag. Let's target it first. We need to make it text transform and capitalize. Or uppercase because all the text here is uppercase we also need to add some space between this k and the package we can do it with just putting an space in here now let's add an letter spacing to something like 1.7 pieces so it will have some gap between this letter as the design now let's style these things packages and actually we don't need to apply packages it will have a class of cst which is this on cst and for the cst it will be display and flex again the align items will be center now let's target the CST and the paragraph tag. Let's change the color to this one because as you can see here, it got the similar color with the title. So I'll paste that color here. And we also need to make it font size larger than this. So 34 pieces and the font weight will be bolder so 800 but we don't want this similar stylings with this month here so we need to style this separately cst p with the class of time let's make the font size to 15 pieces and also let's make the font weight to 500 Let's make the margin left a little bit like 5 pixels to create some space with this text. Now we also need to change the color. So this is the color with the body. So I'll just grab this and paste it here. Now it all looks similar with the design. Now let's work with this one, this 
slider or the range slider okay now it got the input field with the class name of range and the id of price slider so i'll just grab the id name and let's start with the input with the id name of price slider let's give this a oid of 100 percent now it will take the entire oid so we actually need to modify this to look like this one the only way to do that is to create it again ourselves so at first we need to make it invisible so for that we can use the web kit appearances and none so it will make it completely disappear now we need to give it a specific height so let's say 10 pixel we cannot see anything so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a background here so it will be a linear gradient actually this is kind of tricky because in here the previous part or the active part of the slider got this color but the rest of the slider got this kind of grayish color so we can use the linear gradient to make this happen so we want to put this linear gradient from left to right so we need to specify to right and to right we want the first value to this color let's grab the color from the style guide so this is the color soft sand full slide bar i'll just grab this and paste it here this is the first color and after that we actually can specify the percentage let's give this a percentage of zero percent i'll just duplicate this and make it 100 percent now let's add another color here so at the right side we got this grayish color and they also provided us the color in here this is the empty slider bar i'll just grab this color and apply it again zero percent and 100 percent let's clear out the comma and let's see so now it looks like this so let's make it 50 percent and now it will be like this design so we can also add some border radius to make it corner sounded like the design so let's add a border radius of maybe 5 pixels and uh, this webkit appearance will only work on webkit browsers if you want to make it work in every browsers like for firefox you need to use the moz appearance here now it looks similar to the style now let's target this thumb here we can actually do that so it will be input and this got the class of price slider let's target the web kit dash slider dash thumb and again we need to make the web kit appearance and it will be none now we can style it ourselves so let's give this a height of not auto let's say 40 pixels and also oid of 40 pixels so we need to make it circle so border radius will be 50 percent let's also give this a background color and the background color will be someone from here so this is the slider background i think this is the color so i'll just grab this so there is no change in here because there is a mistake so we need to push a dash there in front of the web kit now it is looking fine so again 
we need to add an arrow kind of things inside it so they have actually given us the image it will be background image and url images icon slider dot svg now we need to remove the repeating so background repeat will be no repeat and it will be center so again background position if you want you can also use the shorthand so background position will be center and now it looks like this we also need to add an hover effect on that because as you can see when you hover on that it got the color of the background the slider which is this cyan color this one so i'll just copy this and add a hover on that now let's put the background color and the value will be this one okay it looks fine but as you can see here it got some kind of border box shadow with that so i will add the box shadow in here box shadow will be 0 pixels this is the spread in the x axis and the y axis 7 pixels 10 pixels 4 pixels and we can use the rgba color i got the color codes here so i'll just paste it now we got this nice uh, box shadow now it is uh, looking fine but as you can see when we move when we move the uh, button here or the thumb this is not increasing so we are going to make it work with the javascript so in that case we are going to change the value of this on so again let's see if we make it 75 it will take the 75 uh, percentage of this interest slider if we make it zero it will be none and if we make it 100 it will take the entire space so we are going to modify this value by the javascript but for css this is it now uh, let's target these things here it has a class of billing and let's give this a text align to center because all the things here are at the center let's also give this a margin top of like 50 pixels to create some gap with the slider now we need to style the billing and the paragraph text let's make the display of inline block all of this now they appear in on a single line we can also add some padding with this at the left and right so at the top and bottom we don't need any so zero and at the left and right seven pixels now let's target the billing and the paragraph tag with the class of discount so this is actually this on and it has a different color and a background color with some border radius so for the color i will just copy it from the style guide.md okay this is the discount text color let's grab this and paste it here we also need to add a background color with that so this is the discount background okay it looks fine but we need to make the text size reduced so let's say font size 11 pixels and let's also add a border radius to make the corner rounded 10 pixels okay fine i think it looks similar with this thing so i'm not going to do anything with that now let's uh, handle this toggle switch So let's target this 
so is and input we need to make it opacity zero now it will be totally gone so the default input switch or the towel or the checkbox is gone now we are going to create on ourselves so is and let's make it display inline block let's give this a height of maybe 45 pixels also a height of 20 pixels let's make the position relative because we need to create the actual this height portion here and we'll make it position relate absolute so let's target the toggle slider which is this actually this uh, thing here this s tag with the class of toggle slider now in this case i'll just okay so the toggle slider let's give this a position of absolute and give this a background color they actually got us a background color this is the toggle background and just grab the color from here and paste it here now from top it will be zero from bottom also zero from left zero from right also zero now we can see it this is the thing so we also need to add some border radius to make it completely rounded actually not completely just the corners rounded now it looks like a switch now what we are going to do is we are going to use a pseudo element to make this uh, a small circle of white so toggle slider and let's use the before pseudo element and for the before let's make the content blank after that we also give it a position of absolute let's give this a background color the background color will be totally white so we need to specify the height and height let's say 14 pixels height will also be the same 14 pixels let's give this a border radius of 50 percent now it looks like this so we need to position it here so from left 3 pixels and from top also 3 pixels now it is properly positioned okay now as you can see in the active status when we hover on that it got this background color of this color so we need to add the hover effect with this toggle slider toggle slider and hover let's change the background color and the background color is this one now it looks fine also if you want you can also add a transition effect with that all maybe 0.2 second is okay fine now we need to change something here so whenever we checked this uh, input field we need to move this white circle at the right corner so let's target the switch and this is actually the input so input and whenever it is going to be checked we are going to target the class of toggle slider and before so this one which is actually the height circle and let's add a transform so translate and this is around the x axis we need to push it at the right so let's try 25 pixels 
okay now it is totally working so we can add a transition with the not the transform with the before pseudo element so i will add all 0.4 second is in out now it looks better so this section is done let's target the footer so with the footer at first we need to make it display flex and justify content will be a space between also align items will be center now let's target the button first footer a and we need to give this a color so how it is this is the pale blue cta text the call to action text so i'll just grab this and paste it here let's also give this a background color so you can grab it from here cta background so this is it now let's remove the text decoration and make it none also i think we need to use the text transform as well actually no it is the similar text now let's add some padding with it so padding at the top and bottom 10 pixels but from left to right 30 pixels let's also add a border radius of 20 pixels now it looks like the design here so when you hover on that we need to make the text color white so let's target the footer a and add a hover with that and let's change the color to triple f which is the white color if you want to add a transform you can also do that actually if you want to add a transition you can also do that but it looks actually fine so let's leave it like that and target these things footer and ul so we need to make the list style none now these dots here are gone now let's target the footer li and add some margin at the bottom so maybe 7 pixels it will have some gap among each other now let's target the footer and li and image so we need to create some gap between the image and the text so the image will have a padding at the right let's add 10 pixels of padding now it looks fine so i think this azer is got darker colors than this design so let's change that let's target the azer here and give this a border at the top maybe we can also try bottom on pixel solid and i will use an rgba color here so you want the black color with an opacity so let's try point on and it looks fine so this is the stylings but for a smaller size display it will not work very great so we are going to do that later but before give, getting into that we need to work with the inter functionality by the javascript let's create a javascript file which will contain all our javascript codes so let's name it script dot js and we need to link it up with the index.html so at first i'll just grab all the elements from the dom with a variable with some variables so let's create let's grab this on first so this only got this value so you only want to import this on so it has this class name or id name of page view so let's create a variable named view 
document and get element by id because this is actually an id after that let's grab the cost so i'll just add a variable named cost again document dot get element by id and it got the id name of cost this one now we need this range slider so it has the id of price slider so let's slider and document dot get element by id now let's grab the toggle switch here let toggle and again get element by id it got the id name of billing okay everything is fine we got all this now as you can see in the grid me we need to add four different packages so what we can do is we can put this cost inside an array and this space views inside an array so let's do that let's create a variable named maybe um page views and it will be an array this array will contain the page views packages so 10k then the second package is 50k third package i think 100k 500k and the last one is for on million okay we got five packages now let's grab this per month value so let's name and variable like per month again it will be an array but it will contain the numbers 8 12 16 24 and 36 okay now what do you want here so we want to add an event listener with the slider so whenever we slide it it do something right so let's target the slider and add an event listener with it add event listener and the event will be input so this is an input field whenever we input something in it it will do something so we can add the callback function in so in here we want to change the value of this one and this one whenever we move the slider so let's target the cost and inner html so cost is this one so we want to change the inner html and it will be some value from this per month so let's target the per month and if you want to get some value from an array we need to put the position like this now we got the second one if you want to put on it will be 12 which is this one so it uh, counts it starts from zero this is the zero on two three four if we put four and do something with it it will be 36 okay so we can actually call a function in here like let's call a function named update and we are going to create this function in here so there is one thing to keep in mind that whenever we want to we click this or check this checkbox here there will be 25 percent discount applied on the value so if you if the visitor switches to the toggle to yearly billing a 25 percent discount should be applied to all places prices so we need to actually get a value from this so whenever maybe whenever the someone will check this checkbox it will have it will return a value of like true otherwise it will be false like that 
so we cannot actually grab it from the checkbox directly so we need to create an if else statement in here so let's target the toggle and the toggle is this checkbox and we want to add an event listener with that again it will be input and let's call a callback function in here actually it will not be input it will be change because this is an checkbox this is not an input field kind of thing so function and in the function let's put an if statement here so before that uh let's create an variable named is early and i will apply the false value so by default it will be false so if is early is false then we need to make it true so whenever we change the checkbox here it will be applied because we have added an event listener with that and at that time if the is early is false we will make it true else is early will be false okay fine now we are going to create this function so let's change it update value I think it will be uh, more appropriate now let's target the function name this update value and inside it we need to use an if statement so if the is early is true then we need to actually apply the 25 percent discount with the values at that case cost dot inner html will be per month and slider value so what it does is it is going to get the values from the slider i will actually just show you console dot log and slider dot value if we open up the console here and change it you can see this is the value of three this is the zero on two three four so by this values we are going to extract the exact value from this array okay so it finds when the ezl is true we want to apply 25 percent discount that means it will have the 75 percent of the cost so we can actually do that by multiply it with 75 because if we minus 25 we uh, from 100 it will be 75 else cost dot inner html per month it will be slider dot value we don't need to apply any uh, discount in here now whenever we change it it actually changes in here and if we make it yearly actually there is some mistake we need to add 0.75 okay now it's 27 now it's 36 but it is not actually updating every time so we need to run this function in this on also so in this case whenever we change the toggle it will update the function it will run the update function in here now the update will be live see now it is working just perfectly now we also need to change this as well so it got nothing to do with this function so i will just add it in the here so whenever we uh, select this it will only be able to change these page views so i'll just remove this and in here let's target the view which is this variable so it got the page views 
change the inner HTML and it will be this array so page views slider dot value let's save and see it is actually working I think there is still need of a space in the K and page views okay now it is looking fine and it actually does work perfectly so now we need to solve this issue here so in here we want to change the background color right and we only want to do it whenever we touch this uh, slider so we can add the function with it because in this case we got a event listener added with this so let's do that let's create a variable and i'm just going to name it value so in this case the thing is we got a value from this slider and the values start from 0 to 4 right but in the style.css as you can see here we got a linear gradient so this is the thing so whenever it is at the middle it got this value of 50 percent and if it in here we want to looks like 100 percent and when it is in here we want the value of 25 percent right so in the middle let's uh, calculate this in the middle so in the middle we got a value of 50 but in this case the slider got a value of 2 that means we need to multiply the value with 25 right so that is what we are going to do let's grab the value from this slider and we are going to multiply this with 25 so whenever it will be at the 100 percent that means the value will be 4 and it will make it 100 so let's multiply it with 25 now if you want to see it you can also do that console.log value let's open up the console so now this is 50 this will be 75 100 50 and 0 so we are going to apply this value on the linear gradient so i'll just grab the entire thing here and in this case let's target the thing so this which is this slider A style and let's add the background the property name is the background inside it we can use an backticks we need to use the backticks because we need to apply this uh, value of this variable directly applied in this so let's just paste it here so we want to change this value right so we need to put a dollar sign and the curly bracket let's put the name of the variable now it is going to apply a percentage with that let's save and now it is working just fine so whenever it is in here it will have a hello of 100 it will be applied on 100 percent in here it will be 25 so 25 percent and like that so this things is perfectly functional but we need to do something else in here so as you can see in the mobile display in here the cost will be at the top but in here it is below the slider so i think it will be better for us to create another uh, maybe another paragraph tag or anything like that and we are going to make this on display hidden or display none for a smaller size display and it will be visible then and in this case also it got the 25% discount but in here it is only 25% so let's open up okay okay now we are going to target this by the standard css let's use an media query here but before getting into that we need to add the same thing at the bottom 
at below of this slider so this is our range slider and after that i will just copy this cost on because only these things we need so we got this again we are actually going to figure that out later but uh, in this 25 percent discount let's just copy this and add another class with it maybe um, discount to actually let's use it fully discount to and it will be only 25 percent it will be visible for a small size display so now let's add the media query but before that for larger size display we don't want to display this and this so let's target the cst2 which is the bottom one and make it display none and it should be gone oh sorry i need to apply the class of cst2 now it should be gone okay it is gone now let's make this invisible too so it is the paragraph tag with the class of discount to again display will be none now it is gone now let's go back to the smaller size display and figure this out so at first i will just add a media query maximum it will be 425 pixels which is actually this uh, breakpoint now inside this let's target the body first so i want to make the font size smaller like 12 pixels after that we on the main on which is this on to be invisible so make the display none so it will be gone now we need to make this visible it will be display flex okay fine so it is totally visible now also we need to make it center so justify content center we also need to add some padding at the top to create some gap with the slider maybe 40 pixels will be fine now let's talk about the packages we need to push it at the center so packages and we need to make it a flex direction column maybe okay now it's center let's target the discount and in this case we need to make it display none which is this full on but we are going to make the discount to display inline block now it should be visible so whenever in the smallest larger size display this will be visible but a smaller size display this will be gone and the discount will be displayed and same thing goes on here the top one disappears and bottom ones appears now let's reduce the padding at top content and bottom content as well so top content and the footer let's reduce the padding to 30 pixels we also need to uh, position it properly because in here they appear after each other so let's target the footer and change the flex direction to column now it will look like this so we need to create some gap between these two 
let's make the text align center otherwise the featured text here at the left aligned now let's target the footer and the anchor tag and add a margin at the top of 20 pixels so it will have some gap between the button and this text okay the styling is done but the thing is it doesn't work so we need to modify this as well so let's move on to the script.js and add another variable here so this is the cost this is the first one and this is the second one let's change the id name to cost2 and in the script.js create a copy of this maybe cost2 and cost2 so everything will be the same but we need to repeat that so cost2 and cost2 now it should work just fine So these things uh, looks like this one similar as the design and for larger size display it also looks great okay so it is totally functioning everything is fine so I think this was a pretty big project and kind of complex thing. So if you are watching from that start to finish then you are a very passionate people. So thank you very much for watching this far and I will upload the codes in the code pen. So if you want to see that you can find the link in the description below. So tomorrow we are going to create another challenge. We are going to do another challenge from the frontendmentor.io. If you are not subscribed yet, please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. So see you tomorrow with another challenge. Take care and goodbye.